Shot of M, and I'm back here with another YouTube video. And today I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm gonna show you guys the home of a very prominent African American man who was actually the first licensed black doctor in the country, and his name was Mr. Pope. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the inside. I have someone that's gonna be showing me around his home, you know. And like I said, he was a very, very prominent man in Raleigh. He even ran for mayor. But you guys are gonna see all that during this tour once I show you guys. So just stay tuned, stick around, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. Um, and then number two right there, that's the house you're in right now. But that's from 1975. Okay. So as you can see, there used to be houses. So he had, so he had more than one house? Uh, so yeah, the first one is where he grew up. Oh, wow. Um, and then he bought this plot of land in 1900 for only $300. Uh -huh. And then and then built this house. Um, so from 1901 to his death in 1934, he lived nice. here. That's a picture? Of, that's him right there? Yeah, that's a young him right there. Oh, wow. And then uh, there's an older, him a little older over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, all of the furniture in this house is original. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then this is where, number four, that's where he went to Leonard Medical School. Oh, okay. Um, and number three, that's Reverend Tupper, who founded Leonard Medical School, in addition to Shaw University. Okay. So Reverend Tupper actually personally invited Dr. Pope to to come and graduate from the first graduating class of Leonard Medical School, which is cool. Um, Leonard Medical School isn't operational still, but the building's still there part of, as a part of Shaw's campus. Okay. Um, this is Dr. McCulley, another doctor who, um, that building number five was his practice. Okay. Um, and so he was right down the road. He handled uh, women's health, labor and delivery and stuff like that. So Dr. Pope was the only doctor in the area. Okay. Um, and Dr. Pope was married twice. Uh -huh. The first was to Lydia. Um, she's the one with the umbrella in that picture. And then that's the rest of her family. Uh -huh. um, unfortunately, she died of tuberculosis about five years um, after they married. Uh -huh. um, and then he soon remarried Delia. Who are the um, other women in the picture? Um, those are her siblings, oh, okay. her sisters. And then I believe that's her father in the middle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, cool. And then he, after she passed, and he remarried to Delia, which is number seven right there. Okay. Um, she was estimated uh, 22 years younger than he was. Oh, wow. Um, and they had two children together, Ruth and Evelyn. Um, Evelyn was born in 1908 and Ruth was born in 1910. Yeah. Um, and then this piano, um, he had shipped in from Chicago. Um, status symbol, he really wanted to show off his wealth. Uh, he bought this uh, for his first wife, Lydia. Lydia had no clue how to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but his second wife, Delia, loved to play to okay. the point where you could see bite marks in the piano. Bite where, marks? Yeah, <laughs> from, uh, from her daughter trying to get her attention while she was playing. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> uh, another cool feature in this room is this chandelier up here. Mm -hmm. um, it was imported from Europe. Hmm. Um, and the ones pointing down were electric, but electricity was newer and not as reliable. So the ones pointing up actually used to be gas. So hmm. in case you lost electricity, they still were able to have light in this room, which is really cool. That's cool. That's cool. Um, he also served in the Spanish-American War as a medic. He was a part of the first all-black regiment in U.S. history. That includes officers. Before that, the officers were normally still white. Um, hmm. In the picture right there, he's the one on the left. And... Yeah, those are, that's his actual medical kit with some of the medicines uh, that he used, his first aid kit and uh, his revolver. You know how long he served in the war or in the... I don't, I think he, I think it was 1898. Okay, okay. Um, and he didn't, I mean, he was a medic, so he didn't see active combat. Um, okay. But that sword in the picture is actually right here. Wow. And then this other sword, he was part of the, the Freemasons, um, the building still over on Blunt Street. So this was his Masonic sword. Okay. Um, 
as you see, he's, he does a lot of stuff besides uh, just a doctor. So he also opened a life insurance company. Nice. nice. Yeah, he kind of saw that gap. Um, that needed to be filled, especially for African American families uh, mm -hmm. during that time because he noticed that people were having to sell everything and give up their life savings just to bury their loved one. Um, so he did that. He also ran for mayor in 1990. Yeah, I read about I read about that. Yeah, so yeah, he was the first African American uh, person to run for mayor. Um, he didn't win, uh, but so 126 votes with literacy says still in effect. Um, he got some uh, immigrant votes because there's a lot of immigrant families who lived around here and in addition to some white votes because he was a pretty prominent man um, in the community. Nice. Um, he also ran with Cheek and Lightner. So the COL indicates colored instead of colonel. Um, okay. And that was to make sure that illiterate white people didn't actually accidentally vote for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but actually Lightner's grandson became the first black mayor of, of Raleigh. Okay. So it really is set, set up, um, which is really cool. Um, here we have a copy of his father's Friedman papers. Oh. So this was actually a reason Dr. Pope was one, um, one of the people who were allowed to vote. It's because he could prove that he, um, he was third generation free. Okay. Um, and this is an example of a political cartoon that uh, Josephus Daniels, don't know if you heard about him. He's been, um, he was white supremacist um, from the area who yeah. Oh, he drew, so he drew this? Uh, yeah, and he put it in the newspaper to again discourage people from voting oh, for them during wow, that time. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, all this China was there. This is just one of the sets that we have that we put out. Um, and then these are a bunch of pictures of his two daughters growing up. Um, they both got their master's degrees, one in library science and the other in home economics. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they kept this home throughout the years because they had their master's degree. During that time, it wasn't as desirable in a wife to have that level of education. So they never married, never had children. Wow. Um, but this is actually Ruth, the youngest, on her mm -hmm. 90th birthday in this home. You can see the piano in the wow. background. How long did she live? live to um, she just died in 2000. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so she's part of the reason that we still have this house. Um, they declared it a historic site. Very cool, I and mean, one of them actually dated Thurgood Marshall at one oh. point too, which was incredible. And that's them, that's uh, some of them. Yes, yeah, so that's, um, there's Ruth right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, and those are some of her students that she taught. Oh, cool. And then out here, um, this is Des. With, uh, these are, all these books are original to the family. In this cabinet, there's more medical books. And then up here is family books. You can you might recognize some of the titles like Adventures of Tom Sawyer is in there. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so all it's these like his little library. Area. Yeah, and this is just a fraction of it. Uh, we have they really left so much. But they even left a. a what is this? This is a phone um, that's <laughs> relevant to the time period. Um, the only item that's not original to the home, but it is what they would have had. Um, they were actually one of the few people during that time to have a private line instead of having to use the party line. Oh, okay. And they had a phone number that was only three digits long, four, six, seven. So, <laughs> so yeah, very, <laughs> very uh, rare for them to have a phone. Again, that status symbol, which is really cool. Um, and then up here, this is, uh, that was their maid call box. So around the house, there used to be buttons. And then they would light up depending on the corresponding room. Oh. So they would know. And also, towards the end of his life, he saw patients right out of his home. So that could also help indicate what room the patient was in, which okay. is really cool. Wow. Um, that was a technology for them back then, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. And this was an ad for, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Madam C.J. Yeah. Walker. Uh -huh. um, so his second wife, Delia, actually trained under her in oh. her styling. Oh, wow. So yeah, that was just uh, one of the ads that... And she was very prominent also. Right? Oh, yeah. Very prominent. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so I'm going to give you guys a tour of the upstairs. And these are just photographs of people from back then.
concludes our video for today. Thanks again for watching and make sure you guys like, share and subscribe to this content. You know, if you want to see more videos like that, um, please let me know in the comments. All right, peace.